Good afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown speaking. Uh, as always, just a quick audio test. If you can hear me, just raise your hand. Click on the little hand icon at the bottom. Okay, great. I just want to kill my audio on the other side. Perfect. We're in business. Today we've had talking on no paid letters. A relatively simple concept, but I think something that often confuses people, they arrive and folks aren't quite sure exactly why or how or where they came from. Um, so we'll be looking at that. Pros and cons, what they do, why we get them, what makes them important. So no paid letters, often known as NPLs, and that's the acronym for them. This is an industry which is a big fan of acronyms. Uh, short answer, what are they? They are the right to buy new shares. And they will be in an existing company that you already have shares. We will touch on that. They come out of a rights issue. And I'll, I'll touch in a moment on why a company might have a rights issue, what the logic behind that is. But the broader term you would hear is rights issue, and part of the product of a rights issue is a no-paid letter. And that's where we as investors would get involved. A no-paid letter, as it arrives in your account, it entitles you to buy one new share. It's very important that it's on the share which you already own. For example, you own SAB shares, they issue no paid letters, that gives you a right to buy SAB shares. Two things. Firstly, uh, you had to have owned the shares, SAB in this case, or whichever one it might be, but we're talking SAB in this example. And secondly, you give the right to buy more SAB. You can't go off and buy MTN or something like that. They give you the right to buy that new share. That means you have to pay for it. That's critically important. And there is something called a take-up price. And we'll come to that in, more de in detail. So we'll leave that there. But the point is it gives you the right to buy a share. So a no-pay letter is that right to buy a new share. And the price you would have to pay is going to be set by the company. It's that being the example we mentioned a moment ago. Why would a company do a rights issue and therefore uh, uh, have no paid letters as a, as a byproduct? Short answer, they need money. Now it's, particularly, you saw a lot of it in sort of 2009, 2010, even into 2011. Companies need to raise cash for whatever reason. They've got too much debt. They want to expand. And one of the ways to raise cash is issue new shares. Remember, a company will have 10 million authorized shares but they've only issued, say, 5 million. And they therefore issue those new shares to investors, existing investors, existing shareholders have to get first offer. That is a listing requirement of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So they can't just go off to some random person and say, do you want to buy new shares? They have to say to the existing folks, hey, you have a right to buy these new shares. And how they manage that right is what we call that no paid letter. There are alternatives. To, to a rights issue, in other words, of raising cash, um, they could get a bank loan, they could get a shareholder loan, they could issue a bond into the bond market, and those are all going to be preferred. Uh, generally, a rights issue is your last resort. And why is that preferred? Because if you take a loan or issue a bond, you ultimately pay it back. So it's a short-term issue. If you issue new shares, in other words, you had 100 shares and now there are 150 shares in the market, you've given them away forever. In other words, you're going to pay dividends on those shares forever. And that's one of the drawbacks of a rights issue, is that ultimately you pay for a rights issue forever as a day. And then, as I said, generally it's a last call. If a company can borrow money in other ways, they will generally go that route. The process itself, very simple. Uh, starts off, a company would detail all the information in a sense. That's the Stock Exchange News Service, published by the JSC. So they would announce the rights issue in the JSC. And they will also then give all the details. So they would say, well, you know, current investors are going to get so many. This is the take-up price. These are the relevant dates that are important. These are the underwriters. And those are all phrases and the like I'll go into shortly. As I said, the current investors will get the no-paid letters. You identify them by the code XYZ which is, would be the normal company code, and then there is an N appended to the end. So if SAB were to issue no-paid letters, there would be SABN. 
and they trade on the on the on the JSC as a normal instrument. They're trading. The issue is, of course, uh, is is that they have a finite lifespan. But you would buy and sell them via a normal broker. They would arrive in your brokerage account. The point being, keep an eye on the sense so you know when they're coming, and when they arrive, you know what you want to do with them. As I said, they'll have a take-up price that is set by the company. Every low pay data you get gives you an entitlement to buy one share, and there will be a price. So uh, let's move to MTN as an example. MTN is currently trading at around 142 Rand. They issue no paid letters. That would give you the right to buy MTN shares at a price that they have set. Typically, that take up price will be below the current share price. Uh, Earlier this year, Capitec did a rights issue. The share was at 175 and they did the issue price at 125 rand. So you could, existing Capitec shareholders could buy new Capitec shares at 125 rand. Sounds like a good deal. Small catch, I'll come to that. As I said, there's an expiry and take up date. The dates are very important. If you don't do anything, you simply lose your no pay letters. They will appear in your brokerage account. Suddenly one day you would log on or phone your broker or get a statement there would be no pays. As I said, my advice is you know, always if you own a company, keep an eye on the sense announcements that they're making so that you know what's happening with the company you own and therefore you know when, if there are no paid letters coming. You either have to sell them on the open market or you take them up. If you don't sell them and you don't take up the right, in other words, to buy new shares, they expire, they lapse, they have no value. It also means that because they trade in the market, you can actually go and buy no paid letters. Maybe I got 100 no paid letters for Capitec and I think, I don't want more Capitec shares. So I go and sell these no paid letters and I sell them on the market and the code there would have been CPIN. Capitec no paids. You could have gone and bought those no paid letters off me in the market, and that then gives you the right to exercise them and to buy those Capitec shares at 125 rand. It immediately seems like you're making a smart deal. You're buying a share at 125, its share price is 175, but remember, you had to buy those no paids, and I would have charged you 50 bucks. So, in fact, net effect is flat. The company will detail how many no pages you get. Typically what they will say is you get X number of no pages per 100 shares held. If I remember correctly, for Capitec, you got 10 no pages for every 100 shares. So if you owned 1,000 shares in Capitec, you would have received 100 no paid letters. That entitles you to buy 100 new Capitec shares in that example, or as the case may be, to sell them and to take the money rather. And why would you sell rather than take up? And in the case of Capitec, I, I received my no pages. I sold them in the market because I already had, to my mind, more than enough Capitec. They've done very well for me. But they kind of, in terms of the size they are in my portfolio, they've done so well that they've, they've outgrown their, their ideal holding size. So I sold my no page letters because I didn't want more Capitec shares. So I sold them got 50 rand per no pay, and that was one way that I got some profit out of my Capitec rather than just a paper profit. Take a take price will be detailed in the sense announcement, of course, and that's how much each new share you take up will cost you. As I said, typically at a discount to the share price. So Capitec was 175, and we found the take-up price was 125. Sometimes, and with Ellie's, if I remember correctly, they did a rights issue last year. The share was trading at around one rand eighty, and the take-up price was two rand. In other words, it made no sense. You were going to pay two rand to buy a share via a no-paid letter, yet you could go and buy them in the open market for one rand eighty. Why would you pay more? Well, the only reason you might do that is if you wanted to get a significant amount. Capi uh, sorry, uh, uh, Ellie's is relatively illiquid which means that you would maybe be able to get your hands on uh, you know, a couple of tens of thousands, but maybe you wanted a couple of million. You would have to overpay for them. You would pay a higher price, and today they're trading at about two or five, so you would have slightly scored. But as a typical retail client, we would look at that offer and say, thank you, no thanks, they've got no value, you walk away. The process to sell your no-paid letters is like you would sell anything else. You contact your broker. If you're an online broker, you log on, you take your no-paid, 
which will be uh, ELIN or SABN or whatever, and the fourth letter will be an N. You log on, put them on the market to sell, find the buyers, and you sell. If you want to take them up, you have to notify your broker before the expiry date, before that take-up date. You have to contact them. Some brokers want to do writing. Some are happy with email. Some have electronic means of doing it. Certainly, you have to contact them and notify them you want to take up the right. You want to exercise and buy the new shares. Confirm that they've received that notification. That's just good practice. You know, no one cares about your money and your process more than, any, more than you. So just confirm if you do want to and you have sent a notification, get confirmation from an email or a letter, more than just a telephone call that they have. And remember, you're going to need that cash. Say I'd had 100 uh, Capitec mill paid, 125 rand each, would have cost me 12,500 rand. I need that money in my brokerage account because the broker is going to take it to pay to raise that. And then, of course, that 12,500 rand would go to Capitec as a, as a raising exercise. I mentioned earlier there will be an underwriter. Now, an underwriter is either a company, uh, and not the company he's issuing, it could be another, a different company. It might be a bank, it might be a majority shareholder. What the underwriter says is, okay, we're issuing these shares, these no paid letters, um, and we're going to issue, uh, let's say, a million of them. And if they're not all taken up, if they're not all exercised, the underwriter will, in some cases, guarantee the rights issue. So let's say they do a, a million no paid letters, but only 800,000 are actually exercised. The other 200,000 are allowed to lapse. The underwriter will then take up those 200,000. Now, maybe in the case of Ellie's, where the price was actually above the current share price, maybe the logic there was to get the underwriter to get a nice chunk of shares. I had to pay, as I said, a slight premium to it, but there will often be, not always, but there often is an underwriter, and they will take up those shares not already taken up. Now, a very popular underwriting exercise, uh, no paid letter exercise, the underwriter doesn't have to do much. Sometimes they have to put a fair bit, a fair bit of money down, and then what you will find is that in the cases, the underwriter usually, A, wants to increase their stake, and B, they've got to have big money. I mean, we're talking probably tens, if not hundreds of millions, maybe in some cases, even billions. How do we determine a no paid letter's value? In truth, it's very, very easy. It's the take-up price, less the share price. So you've got a share price, you subtract that, wrong way around. Share price, less take-up. An example, the share is two rand, the take-up price is one rand fifty, so your no paid letter is two rand, which is the share, less one rand fifty, which is the take-up price, gives you a value of fifty cents. That's what you'll trade in the market. If tomorrow the share price goes to two ten, Less your 150, your no paid letter would have gone to 60 cents. Inversely, if the share dropped to 1 rand 80, less the 150 would give you a take up price of 30 cents. So that value for the take up price is very, very simple. And further to that, remember earlier I said, oh, it looks like a bargain. You can buy a 2 rand share at 1 rand 50. Well, if you received the no paid letters, yes, you can. You had the share at two rand, you're given the right to buy more shares at one rand fifty. You say, thank you very much, I'm going to buy at a discount. Often what you will see, though, is the share price will actually come off. Although it was trading at two rand, it might trade a bit lower. But certainly, you can buy them cheap. If you don't have the no page, you have to go buy them in the market at fifty cents. Then you buy the share at one rand fifty equals two rand, which is the current price. So it's only going to benefit the people who were holding and received that no paid letter. Some practical, as I said, always keep an eye on a company sense so that you know if you've got no paid letters coming. Decide if you want to take them up or if you want to sell them. And remember expiry dates. They are critical. There's a date, they expire. After that date, they no longer exist. The other important date will be the last day to trade in order to partake. Or that you own the underlying share, and if you hold them on Friday next week, you will receive the no-paid letters. That's an important date to know as well. The problems notwithstanding that the company is raising money, and why aren't they raising money via more traditional means? In the case of Capitec, I think the point was that they suddenly thought, hey, we can raise 
you know, a billion rand. The share price is ridiculously high, and you can take advantage of it. A lot of companies are doing it because they, they're staving off bankruptcy. They desperately need the cash flow. And then sometimes they take up prices above the current share price. In other words, they are worthless. There's no value to these nil paid letters. You can, you, you can try and sell them, but there will be sellers at one cent, and why would anyone buy them? If the take up price is two rand and the share price is one rand eighty, why buy them and you can go and buy the share in the market at a cheaper price? Dilution, and this is important. I, I alluded to it earlier in the presentation. The point is you've increased the number of shares, but the company size hasn't increased. So everybody's value in the company, what each share is worth, actually goes down a little bit. Now you can argue, okay, they've not got the cash. So the company did increase in size because the money raised from the rights issue from buying those shares at the take-up price goes to the company. But it's not a linear relationship. And as I said, they've given away the right to that company forever and a day. If it was a loan, they would pay it back, and all would be good. Here yeah, they're going to be paying dividends on these shares literally forever. Quick recap, no paid letters, you get them for free as an existing shareholder. You have to take up the rights or sell them. If you're going to take up, you'll have to pay in. In other words, you have to pay for the price of the new shares, and you have to action all of this before the expiry date. Check with your stockbroker. Different brokers will have different ways of doing it. Make sure that you know what their process is. And as I said, if you want to take it up, there's cash to pay. You need to put that money in. Samani, coming to you now. Hi there, what is the limit I think for every hundred shares you you have, you are trying for one share. What if you happen to have ninety nine shares? Does it mean that uh, you want to qualify? That is the first question. And then the second question is how does this really differ much from a share speed? Uh, I, I know that the share speed the normal general group when a price is quite high and when you need to price is a bit cheaper, you know, for yeah. let's say the price of a thousand and then they do it just data. Oh, I mean, how Okay, great question. I'll come to the share split set. Um, to the first part, great question. What happens if you have a hundred shares? So they, you have to have. They're going to give you one per hundred, and you've only got ninety-nine. They will detail that in the sense what they're doing with what they would call part holdings or roundings, etc. They may round up, they may round down. You might get nothing. There's another problem there. Is let's say you've got a hundred shares, so you get. Uh, 10 no paid letters. And the no paid letters are trading at 10 rand each. So if you go into the market and sell them, well, it's going to cost you 100 rand. And, it's what, and you're going to receive 100 rand. In other words, the cost of the transaction is going to be the same, but maybe even more than you're going to receive. So for small shareholders, sometimes a, a rights issue simply doesn't work for you. You're simply not going to benefit from it. Um, and certainly that 99 issue, they would detail it in a sense. In that example, I imagine they would give you the one share. Um, the problem then is one share, if you trade it, it's going to cost you 60 or 70 rand. You might only receive a lot less than that, in which case you either take it up or you walk away. The share split, uh, actually very, very different to what we're looking at here. The rights issue, the company's actually raising money. In other words, there's a direct benefit to the company. There'll be more shares in issue, and they get cash in the process. With the share split, and let's take Capitec in its example. Shares trading at, let's say, 170 rand. And the Capitec director said, you know what, that's too expensive in terms of rands and cents. We would rather have our share trading around the 20 rand level because for a lot of people psychologically they like to buy in large quantities. In truth, it's about the rand value. But they would do a share split. So they would do a, a 10 for 1 split, let's say. So if I owned 1,000 Capitec shares at 170 rand each, value of my portfolio, 170,000. They do a 10 for 1 split. What would happen is my quantity would increase by 10. So I'd go from 1,000 to 10,000. The share price would decrease by 10. It would go from 170 to 17 rand. So I would have gone from 1,000 shares at 170 to 10,000 shares at 17 rand. Net effect to me, no difference. I've still got a, a shareholding worth 170,000 rand. What does typically happen after a share split is that it's typically good for the share price. Because it, you know, there is an issue among investors. They like to buy, you know, the penny stocks, the stocks at 10 or 20 rand because their 10,000 rand gets them a higher quantity. In truth, if you're buying 10,000 rand, whether you get 
one share or a million shares, your exposure is 10,000. So it really is a, a trick more than anything else.